Did you know several devices work in tandem behind the scenes in a network to ensure that relevant information reaches you accurately anytime you want? Hundreds or thousands of such devices called network devices could operate in a computer network to ensure clear communication and good connectivity. In this video, we will discuss a few network devices and common peripheral devices used in a network. First, the modulator demodulator or the modem as it's more commonly called. A modem converts the digital signals sent by the computer into analog signals and transmits them via a telephone line. It also receives analog signals from other computers and converts them into digital signals for your computer to understand and display the relevant data. Next, we will see about repeaters. One of the simplest network devices with just two ports. It strengthens an incoming signal received in one port and descends the data to the destination from the other one. Devices called hubs are multi-port repeaters that broadcast data to all the devices on the same LAN. However, it consumes a lot of bandwidth as a hub transmits data to all the devices, irrespective of whether the device requires it. Next up are bridges. Like physical bridges connecting two geographical points, bridges in networks connect two LANs to create a single aggregate network. Similar to bridges but offering a little more sophistication are devices called switches. These are multiport bridges more secure than a hub that transfer data in packets only to the intended device. You might have heard of routers. They are vital to any network. Routers are intelligent devices that can perform the operations of hubs, bridges or switches as they direct requests from one network to another by analyzing the IP address in the packet. As the first line of defense, network admins must configure routers to allow only authorized traffic. A router helps create an extensive network by connecting networking segments or subnets. Coming up next are access points. These are advanced devices that help create a WLAN in an organization. It typically connects through cables to routers, hubs or switches and then projects the Wi-Fi signals over a particular area. The next device we will look at in this video is a firewall. Firewalls act as the security barrier between the private network and the public internet and ensure that data that reaches a network is filtered according to the organizational security policy. Some networks also use other devices like load balancers which distribute traffic across several servers to increase capacity and reliability and WAN accelerators which improve the efficiency and speed of data transfers across LANs. Let us now look at managed and unmanaged devices. Any device that contains an SNMP agent is called a managed device. These devices can be configured and are more secure. They can also be monitored. The devices that do not have SNMP agents are called unmanaged devices. These are simple devices that start forwarding traffic once they are plugged in. They do not offer the sophistication of managed devices and are less secure. Peripheral devices are also usually present in networks like printers, UPS and storage devices. Printers and scanners communicate with computers through wired medium or wirelessly. For higher productivity, we must monitor a network printer's marker, toner and ink levels. A UPS ensures emergency power if there is any issue in the input power supply. Organizations track its availability, health and performance to ensure that the UPS device can deliver top performance always. Network Attached Storage or NAS, redundant array of independent disk or RAIDs, tape libraries and fabric switches are some storage devices used in a network that can share data with several devices. That's it about the devices in a network. To recap, we saw the different network devices and the peripheral devices used in most networks. So, whenever you watch a video over the internet, collaborate with a colleague in another location, send an email, take a printout, or even browse the internet. Think about how several devices perform different functions in the background to ensure that you receive the correct information at the right time without any data loss. A faulty device or an accidental power off, even in one of the devices may result in poor network connectivity. Here's a question for you. How do you think the devices would communicate with each other? Think about it before moving on to the next lesson in this course. We hope you enjoy the video. Talk to us if you have any questions. Let's start networking.